My best friend Alex and I made the decision to go on an exhilarating trip in the summer of 2015 and rented a remote cabin hidden away in the middle of a dark and enigmatic forest. We couldn't wait to catch up and enjoy some much-needed leisure because the thought of a snug retreat from reality tempted us. There was an ominous vibe in the air as we got closer to the cabin. The shadows cast by the forest's gloom and the tall trees' seeming whispering of ancient secrets gave us the chills. We were eager to make the most of our time together despite our indifference. We were greeted with a terrifying sight as soon as we entered the cabin. Filthy footprints all over the floor, as if someone had been stumbling around with malicious intent. We tried to dismiss the waning of our early exhilaration as a mere coincidence, in the hopes that our weekend wouldn't be marred by anxiety. The first day we spent exploring the mysterious forests around the cabin was full of laughing and excitement. But when dusk fell, a gloomy feeling descended upon us like a thick fog. I reassured Michael that his claims of seeing a figure lurking in the shadows were likely merely figments of his imagination. I was terrified when we got back to the cabin, though. Our possessions were now encircled by additional, recent, and purposeful footsteps. It appeared as though a hidden force had been keeping watch over us and waited for the right opportunity to strike. We heard slow, quiet footsteps that night as we were sleeping outside our bedroom door. Our nerves were on edge as the darkness outside seemed to harbor an awful presence. Michael called out my name in a quivering whisper. He murmured, we're not alone, his eyes wide with fear. I was unable to speak, so I just nodded. We clung close to one another as we struggled to get the fortitude to face the terror that was waiting just outside the door. Then, out of the shadows, we heard a terrifying laugh that sent shivers down our spines. Our foreheads began to perspire coldly, and our hearts raced. The ominous laughing became louder, echoing through the night, and the walls of the cabin appeared to close in on us. We pushed furniture against the door, trying to block the mystery visitor as our pulse raced. We were unable to fall asleep, so we stayed awake while straining to hear any sounds that would indicate the intruder's actions. When dawn eventually arrived, we left the hut with the first rays of sunlight, leaving the night's horrors behind. We were filled with fear as we drove away and couldn't get rid of the impression that something evil was still watching us from the shadows of the woods. Because we were afraid that no one would believe our horrific experience, we never mentioned that night to anyone. As a sobering reminder that evil may lurk in the most unexpected places, waiting to strike when we least expect it, the memory of that weekend still haunts us today. I set out on my own, seeking refuge in nature's embrace, deep within Oregon's frightening woods. When I arrived, the city was a deserted, abandoned wasteland. The Arambai Reserve was a secluded cabin in the woods with an ominous atmosphere. My spine started to tingle as soon as I walked inside. The silence was deafening and the walls appeared to be speaking long-buried secrets. The air was still and heavy with the musty weight of decay, choking me. I shuddered and made an effort to ignore the dread that began to creep into my consciousness. The cabin had its own personality as night fell. My heart began to race as shadows formed bizarre shapes and danced on the walls. Strange noises, resembling the melancholy screams of invisible creatures, echoed from the forests beyond. In an effort to fend off the horror that was threatening to swallow me, I nestled in my bed and pulled the covers tightly around myself. I noticed glimpses of a man standing at the window in the dim moonlight. It stared at me with an enigmatic glare as its eyes shone like coals in the night. As I trembled, frozen by fear, I dared not move. I made the decision to go on a hike the following morning in order to relax but it was as though the woods had a life of their own. The trees beckoned me into their eerie realm as their branches stretched out like skeletal fingers and twisted and bent. The rustling leaves warned me to go by whispering ominous secrets. I sensed a figure lurking in the shadows back at the cabin. The room appeared to shut in on me and the air seemed heavy with evil. As if the cabin itself were alive with sinister intentions, I could practically hear the walls groaning under the influence of invisible forces. 
That evening, I heard footsteps outside as I was in bed. They approached the cabin slowly and deliberately. A cold perspiration appeared on my brow, and my chest began to race. Once more, a figure approached the window, this time with a face hidden by shadows. It kept an eerie calm while watching me, which gave me the chills. I packed my items and left the cottage out of panic, not daring to turn around. A weight lifted off my shoulders as I drove away, but the feeling of dread persisted in my head. I still had the impression that something evil was hiding in those woods even though I am safe and sound at home. As a constant reminder of the evils that can lurk in even the most tranquil of locations, the recollection of that eerie cabin and the man at the window haunts my dreams. I was on a work trip the previous year and yearned for calm outside of airports and airplanes. I chose to drive instead of flying since I detested the confined spaces and the commotion of flying. I reserved two cabins on Erm, one for the outbound trip and the other for the return. The first cabin was unremarkable. It was a peaceful refuge tucked away in the arms of nature. The horror started with the second one though. I arrived at the Erm in the late evening, exhausted from a hard day of travel. I started to feel uneasy while I was moving around the house. The design was ominous, with heavy draperies that appeared to conceal secrets in their folds and antique dark wood furnishings. The smell of cigarette smoke was overpowering and oppressive, as though it had been imprisoned for years. I couldn't help but think that this wasn't the Singh house as I turned to look at the web photos again. The layout was odd, and the furnishings appeared to be from another time period. However, I was too exhausted to make a fuss about it. I assumed it had to be an oversight or a straightforward mistake. I threw my suitcases against the wall and made the decision to quickly shower before going to bed. A eerie calm descended upon the cabin like a curtain of shadows over its walls as the warm water cascaded over me. I awoke in the middle of the night to a loud noise that broke the silence. The sound in the hallway sounded like something had fallen. My ears were ringing like a war drum as my heart raced. However, as I tried to hear more, all I could make out was the odd echo of my own breath. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake the uneasy sense that something wasn't right. I tried to go back to sleep, but my mind wouldn't let me without first going around the home. It was a choice that will stick with me always. I entered the hallway and discovered it to be vacant and free of any evidence of commotion. The rooms were peaceful and quiet, just as they were when I first came. I grumbled and went back to my bedroom, berating myself for my overactive paranoia. But as I went in, I just caught a peek of activity in the restroom. A shiver ran down my spine as my heart halted. A tall, gaunt creature with a ferocious expression emerged from the shadows. He firmly uttered, Wallet, with no sign of emotion in his voice. I gestured to my backpack, leaning up against the wall while my hands shook. My wallet, my money, and my identity were all inside. The kitchen knife he gripped tightly in his palm, though, like a talon poised to attack, caught my attention more. I was told to step into the hallway as he put the bag over his shoulder and tightened his hold on the knife. Another man was standing at the end of the corridor as I took a step back. His features were similar to the first, and the hunger in his eyes gave the impression that he was preparing to pounce on his prey. My voice was barely audible as I found the resolve to speak despite the fear that had me in my throat. Just let me go, please. The man in the hallway then turned his head and appeared to be preoccupied as he cast a peek in that direction. Although it only lasted a moment, it was sufficient. I recognized my opportunity when my instincts took over. My veins were throbbing with adrenaline as I ran towards the front door. I didn't dare turn around because of how chilly and stinging the night air felt. My life really did rely on it at that particular time, so I ran as if it did. I managed to get to a gas station nearby and frantically called 9-1-1 to report what had happened. The men were far gone and completely engulfed in the darkness when the police finally arrived despite their speedy arrival. When the police revealed that thefts and assaults were tragically frequent in that neighborhood, they gave away the area's seedy past. 
I was merely a bystander, an innocent tourist who unwittingly came into danger. The area appeared ominous even in broad daylight, like a ghostly painting that expertly concealed its secrets. I couldn't believe I had erroneously reserved an errand in such a dangerous location. But the sound of numerous footsteps pursuing me as I ran for my life worried me the most, haunting my thoughts and keeping me up at night. I came upon a malevolence in that dark cavern's depths that I couldn't fathom, a darkness that now haunts in the darkest corners of my psyche. Thank <laughs> you.